Uh, okay, so welcome to the uh, seminar today. Uh, we have Kungu Kim as a speaker. Uh, he is from the University Chung An uh, in Seoul. And uh, as a summary of his uh, trajectory, he uh, studied a degree in physics, right, in uh, Caltech. Then uh, he did the PhD also in Caltech with Jill Raphael. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then he moves to uh, Korea. He moves back to Korea. And then he spent there three years and uh, three and four, four, three, four years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for a postdoc, and then he moved uh, again to Germany, uh, to the University of Cologne. And, uh, and after that, then he returned to Seoul as a assistant professor. Uh, his expertise is on, I guess, on topological uh, systems. And he is going to give this talk on topological flow and metal. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Rosa, for a very kind introduction. So everybody can hear me in the room and also in the Zoom. Okay. <laughs> so I found um, yesterday when I attend the uh, Roberta's internal group seminar, I saw this super relaxed atmosphere like Don Paolo just sit here and <laughs> didn't prepare a PPT, but just scroll down the papers and telling us what is going on. So I was actually shocked <laughs> because I assumed that, that that was actually a seminar, but it was a um, group seminar, so I understand now. So my name is Kun Woo Kim. And my, the first name is Kun Woo, but many people, when I introduce myself, Kun Woo, they don't remember my name. So I just say Kun, then they got my name. I'm from Chung Ang University, which is located in Seoul in South Korea. It is also called CAU. So uh, if you have a chance to visit Seoul, then please uh, let me know. I can invite you. So I prepare um, one slide to tell you where I am and where the, some scenery of the soul. Actually, I found these pictures much nicer than it is. Uh, uh, some girl know. <laughs> uh, this is it's, it's hard to believe this is so. Uh, so it's quite big city. It's like this. It's um, 20 kilometers across and Jung Ang University is located right here. So quite near the center of the Seoul. And you can, uh, you can enjoy nice running and mountaining and so on. So it's a nice place to visit at least once in your life. So. so this is outline on my top. I do study with three keywords. One of them is disorder. This is quantity, time independent. And I study topological system that has topological response, which is quantized. At the same time, the system has periodic time drive driven that we call Broca. And the presentation today is related to the three keywords at the same time. So disorder related to Anderson localization. So for 1D and 2D, no matter how small amount of disorder you have in the system, in the thermodynamic limit at zero temperature, your system goes to insulating phase from the metallic. For the 3D system, you have a critical disorder strength to make the transition from metal to insulator. But it's just tracking to know that for 1D and 2D, as soon as you introduce disorder, it becomes insulator. This I will elaborate more later. And floquet topological insulator and floquet topological metal as opposed to insulator. That insulator subject to Anderson localization in the presence of quantity disorder. And floquet topological metal avoiding Anderson localization. So this system 
is not localized even in the presence of disorder. That we call topological matter, but in the presence of periodic drive, therefore I call blockhead. So these two topics that we work, uh, I work with my collaborators in Germany based on Cologne. And we have uh, two papers published and one last one, which is in preparation. So let me start with an um, imaginary conversation between three figures, Heisenberg and Blow and Anderson later. So early 20th century, like famous physicists like Drude and Sommerfeld, they knew that if they assume free electron picture in solids, they can explain many things, heat conduction and electric conductions, but they do not really have a microscopic understanding why free electron pictures will work well. If you look at the solid, there is a periodic potential because of the atoms. What that means is mean free pass of the electron in the system is atomic level lattice spacing. That is too short to explain any experimental result. So people are puzzled. How come if the mean free pass is on lattice spacing, the metallic phase is possible? So Heisenberg gave this question to his first graduate student, Blow, and Blow got the answer. By the straightforward thread analysis, he found the electrons in solid and periodic potential in space, they move like a plane wave. And they have a picture like a wave in traceless invariant system. After they answer this, they are puzzled by the opposite question. In the beginning, they say, how come metallic phase is possible if the mean free pass is too short? Now they have electron, which is delocalized in the system. Then they have a problem to imagine how come insulating phase is possible in the system. So this is the birth of quantum theory of solid and answer of the presence of insulating phase is the birth of band gap theory, band theory of solid. If Anderson was hearing the conversation between Blow and Heisenberg, and he would say, great gentlemen, when systems are disordered in 1D and 2D, they become insulating phase in the thermodynamic limit at zero time. There are even further development in modern condensed matter physics, even in the presence of disorder, metallic phases are possible. There are some examples. At the critical point between two topologically different insulating phase system behave like metallic. There are topologically protected boundary modes at the surface of topological insulators or topological superconductor. And there are topological block matter that I'm gonna talk in this presentation. So feel free, feel free to interrupt me for any questions. So this is the paper by Anderson in 1957. Let me read the title of the paper, which is Absence of Division. There is no division system in certain random. He assumed onset random chemical potential in type binding model and lattice. Here, the keyword certain. Now we understand that the system he considered belonged to time reversal symmetric system and spinless. Only in the system and 1D and 2D, he found that the system is without division. Let me show the type binding model, which is very simple, spinless, one band, the first term is hopping from site N to site M with constant amplitude T. And every site, it has potential 
which is site and dependent. In this setup, he found that system is insulating. Okay. This figure tells you more about Anderson transition for different dimensions. Here, this is beta function that we really like. The physical meaning of the beta function is like this. If you look at this, in the denominator, this is dl over l. You change system size, not only length, but cross-sectional area. And what's the change of conductance? The fraction of change is dg over g. Say the size of the system is increased by 1%, then denominator is like 0.01. In the case, your conductance of the system will increase or decrease. That's the question. If the conductance increase as you make system size larger and larger, then in the thermodynamic limit, the conductance is increasing. So that we call metal. If increasing system size, conductance is decreasing, this, this beta function will be negative. What that means is as you increase system size, conductance goes to converge to zero. <clears throat> if you know beta function, you will know the destiny of the phase of matter when it comes to transport. If I assume the Ohm's law, can I, can I write down? This Ohm's law provide typical scaling of the conductance with the system size. Conductance is lower if the length is larger and it is proportional to cross-sectional area. This is L power of two for a three-dimensional system. This is L power of one for a two-dimensional system. So this is cross-sectional area. Therefore, system size scaling of the conductance according to Ohm's law, that is valid if the system is deeply metallic. And this is L power of B minus two. And if you compute the beta function for Ohm's matter, then you got the first correction, d minus two. That's precisely the power of this. So if the system's dimension is three, this is positive. This is, if the dimension is one, this is negative. So it tells us that three dimensional system may go to the metallic phase. On the other hand, for one dimensional system, it goes to insulating phase when system size is infinite. What about 2D? The zeros correction is zero. For 2D, we have to look next correction as a function of one over G. This part we want to know. One message here is that dimension plays a very important role for the Anderson transition. The zeros correction come from dimension. If you know dimension of the system, dimension where electrons living, then you know the zeros correction of this beta function. For the 2D, it gets more interesting. It depends on symmetry. Here, is a calculation for time reversal symmetric system. However, one of them is spinless, say single band. The other is spinful. It has spin up and down, and they are coupled by spin or recoupling. They belong to different symmetric class, and therefore they have different corrections. The different correction is not only in magnitude, but sign. For T-scale one, this is orthogonal class, it has negative. For dimension two, beta function is negative. 
Therefore, we expect that system goes to insulating phase in the thermodynamic. For spin orbit couple system, t squared minus one is belong to a symplectic class. It has positive. That means we expect there is metal to insular transition at some point. This is beta function diagram again for 2D. Please focus on green and yellow. This is for topological trivial situation. For the first case, even though this is really small, beta function is negative and it flows to insulating phase. That means because beta function is negative, as you increase system size, conductance converges to zero. However, for the second case, simple case system, if your system's conductance was here, then beta function is positive and it flows to metallic phase. However, if your system's conductance was not so large and was here, then corresponding beta function is negative and conductance decreased to zero. So far, I talked about dimension and symmetry in Anderson transition. Now, the third keyword, topology, plays um, also a very crucial role in the Anderson transition. Please look theta equal pi line as opposed to theta equal zero, which was topological trivial. Now system, this curve make a turn here. Conductance, which is horizontal axis, it doesn't go all the way to the left, meaning negative infinite, which is zero conductance. However, if you look at, if you follow this line, the system's conductance is converging to right here. It is critical metallic. Also for simple class with spinary coupled coupling, even though your system was subject to endless localization for topological trivial system, when your system is topological, then this curve megatron and con conductance of the system is cover converging right here. This is the conductance at the critical metallic phase for a symplectic class. So summing up, I give you an example that enders transition. You have to look first dimension, then symmetry, and topology. This is three most important thing in the disorder system. So people usually assume that this order, this order is not good. Impurity is dirty things. You don't want to consider disorder in the system because it breaks transverse invariance. However, disorder is very convenient. It erases all this microscopic information in your system. And you have to consider something more universal. It is dimension, symmetry, and topology. And you got already enough information about the systems. This destiny when it comes to transport. In this presentation, I want to ask the following. In equilibrium, massless Dirac mode appear at the boundary of topological systems. That system is insulating. Therefore, at the boundary, due to Burke boundary correspondence, you can have Gamnis Dirac mode, which has very nice conductance and people are very interested in its applications. Question is, can we build massless Dirac mode in Floca systems without insulating bulk? So to have this two-dimensional Gamnis Dirac mode in the static system, you need 3D insulating system. At the boundary, which is 2D, you have this Dirac-Gamnis mode. 
The question is, can we build this 2D gameless debug mode in 2D blocker system? In principle, yes, we can do that. There is table, which is very convenient, that can you find topological gameless systems in which symmetric class and which dimension. According to this, we can find five out of 10 classes, there are systems, which is gameless and topological. But this is principal stuff. The question is, can we build physical model which do not rely on long range hopping these systems? Uh, we answer this question in our paper, and yes, we can do that, but not in real 2D system, but one plus one D system, one space and one synthetic dimension. That I will explain more. Let me move from Anderson transition to Floke systems. Floke is interesting. In modern era of science, I think experimentalists, they are so good at controlling light and time dependence in the system. They can go so low temperature and they have this external field, which can be electric field or magnetic field. They can apply it in time dependent manner. To a, to a degree that this external field can change the phase of matter. This condensed matter of interest, they apply the light, they apply the time dependent perturbation so that they want to see, they want to make it different phase. From that opportunity, people propose theoretically how to make topological matter out of static systems. Here's one example from graphene. They apply circularly plus light. They open a gap, which is described here. And this gap system, they claim topological insulator. As an evidence, now they have this surrounding circling chiral edge mode. This is proposed more than 10 years ago and experimentally realized last year, or actually two years ago. What they measure is this. Here's graphene. And they put circular polarized light on graphene. They apply voltage across the graphene. Let's say this is VY. If the system is topological, there must be a whole current. That current direction is perpendicular to the direction of the applied voltage. That's to the left world. And they actually found this current is present. Dividing voltage and current, they got whole conductance as a function of energy. And this is very close to number two, which is expected quantized value for static system. That is great achievement. And as a theorist, because there's experiment, we can do more. We can be comfortable to do more theories based on this. There is other theory and experiment about different topological, flocker topological insulator. Here, as opposed to graphene, they start from trivial insulator and they applied light, which is connecting valence band and conduction band. Then this valence band energy jump to right here. And spin texture of the band will mixed. As a result, effective valence band, which is comprised of original valence band, outside, which is this, 
and inside, this is from the conduction band. This is effect, effective balance band combining the inside of the conduction and outside of the balance. We have spin, spin texture in this band. If you compute turn number, then that's non-zero. This proposal is also realized in photonic system, photonic crystal, sorry. However, there are criticisms. One of them is if the system is really insulating. Insulator, by the definition, there is no low energy excitation because of the band gap. To make excitation in the insulator, you have to apply higher voltage, higher energy than band gap. However, in this driven system, this is based on the excitation. Excitation makes pore and particle pairs that allow low energy excitation. That means the system is not really strictly insulated in bulk. Even though they have, they may have nice as mode, it doesn't mean that bulk is insulating. In the presence of Disorder, which is scatter edge mode and bulk mode, this close quantization of the whole conductance may be lost. Therefore, people need to be smarter to make truly flocker topological insulator. And it is, people do that by making use of and enders the localization of the bulk. Let me go on. This is the second generation of rocket topological insulator. The previous slide is first generation without any disorder. In this second generation, they fully make use of disorder and endorse localization of the system. In the driven system, it is interesting when it comes to energy. It has domain, which is periodic. This domain size is H bar over periodicity, this. And here, when you have this system, there's two ways to close a gap. One of them is you bring the two band to the center. Then these two band meet and combined turn number is zero. That means topologically trivial. Topological trivial system, you can do endless localization. You put disorder and system go insulating phase. Then we are happy. Okay, work is insulator. However, in this case, when system is in the zero energy, as zero, there's no bulk conduction and there's no edge corruption, edge current. Because this edge mode is always between two band. And these two band meet in the center, this edge mode disappear at the same time. But because this is blocker system, there's other way to close a gap. That is bring two band to the zone boundary of the energy, here and here. This is the same energy, modulo to pi over t. In this case, we let them meet and exchange topological property in such a way that they become topological trivial. Recall that only topological trivial band we can do endless localization. Once we have the system, we put this order. Then work become insulator. At the same time, there are chiral edge mode. So this is what we want. We have nice conduction through the edge. At the same time, there's no bulk current. There may be a scattering between bulk mode and chiral edge mode, but bulk mode is insulating. So current is not lost from the edge.
Right? Let me give you one more remark about topological classification of the blockage system. For the Hamiltonian, okay, assume clean system, we can think about crystal momentum. Kx, Hamiltonian is periodic in Kx and Ky. Kx plus 2 pi give you the same Hamiltonian. Therefore, this Kx and Ky make space, which is torus. Say Kx is making this loop and Ky is making this loop. Every point on torus, you can say there's a Hamiltonian value. And there is a space, a Hamiltonian. More precisely, there's a space characterized by field, band, field states in the system. That state has spin expectation value, for example. That spin expectation value is a vector in three-dimensional space. That I indicate with an error. Therefore, at every point on torus, there is a point, corresponding point on the surface of the sphere. Between two closed geometric objects, there is a mapping. And we can think of if there is a topologically different mappings in all available mapping in the system. This is how people characterize topological classification for given dimension and given, sym given symmetry. When it comes to Floca system, there is one more ingredient. There's a time dependence. Therefore, there's not only Kx, Ky, but there is time. The time goes from zero to the periodicity of the system. The point is any unitary operator, U, this can be decomposed into two parts. One part is periodic in time, and the other part is time dependent part. For this periodic in time, say from zero to one half, unitary operator at zero is equal to unitary operator at time one half. That is this. Therefore, this part of the unitary operator is periodic in time, not only in two momentum. For this periodicity, we can now do topological classification of this part of the unitary operator. And the other rest, this is, we can do classification following the classification of the Hamiltonian. So this, classification of the unitary operator has ingredient, which is more than just classification of Hamiltonian. And one comment relevant to our study is, we do this in the presence of disorder. When you have a disorder in mixed states at different energy, and here domain of energy is plus minus pi over t. So if your disorder strength is larger than two pi over t, then every state in energy, they're mixed. In the presence of disorder, there's no distinction between different energies in Broca system. In this way, now we are conveniently disregard the presence of energy. We introduce disorder and we throw out the concept of energy. Disorder make your life easier. Now, we are heading to the last part of the presentation. So far, I talked about Anderson transition, disorder-induced metal to insulate transition, and Floca system. 
blocker systems topological classification and how inverse localization is used to make top blocker topological insulator stable when it comes to topological response. And so at one point I talked that to realize blocker topological insulator, I have to make use one plus one D, one real space, one synthetic dimension that I now introduce. Blocker operator I'm thinking is like this. This is unitary operator, R is some vector. P is shifting operator. Think about wave function in space, which is localized at one space, one position. When I apply operator T plus, what does it do is I shift this wave function to the right. This is shifting operator. When I apply T minus, I shift the wave function to the left. This is very simple translation, translating operator. It comes with some texture in spin, spin space. This is giving you rotation of spin. And together, this is making unitary operator. Here are vectors, they are time dependent. That's the setup I suggest. Therefore, this neutral operator is time dependent. This vector R is time dependent. Because of the neutrality of the operator, there are normalization condition between R's. Some of squares of R's must be one in this representation. And R is time dependent. So pictorially, at time step T, R vector was this. Next time step, this vector is shifting, sorry, rotating. In addition to this clean part, I introduce disorder part, where I introduce on-site phase disorder. And this is mixing all energies in quasi energy domain. Its strength is 2 pi over t. Because of this disorder interpreter, now there's no distinction in energy. What that means is at the same time, to get any response in the system, I have to consider every state in, in the domain, in, in the energy domain. This unitary operator give you time evolution of the wave function. To get wave function at time t, starting from wave function at time zero, I simply apply unitary operator, zero one, one two, two three, three four, all the way to d minus one t. And each unitary operator contain disorder and time dependent clean part of the neutral operator. In this way, I can get time evolution of the wave function. Now, please look the functional form of the neutral operator. This is the assumption. If my time dependent neutral operator depends on time in this way. T is time steps, one, two, three, four, etc. And there is functional K1 plus omega one T and time dependence of the U operator is only a function of this. Then what I can do is I can rotate from the left to the right. This is exponential omega one T D K one and minus. So that in the center, 
I removed time dependence in the unit operator. In this time evolution, I have t, t minus one, t minus one, t minus two, t minus two, t minus three, t minus three, and so on. So that if I replace this expression to here and here, everywhere, then there are cancellations. As a result, what I got is this vector and repeating operator. That repeating operator is time independent. It is blocked because it is repeating. Starting from wave function at zero, I apply the same operator t times. That's block A. That's time periodic. And there's an additional phase. I got this wave function. What this means is if the time dependence of uter operator is in this form, then we can rotate then time evolution of the wave function can be combined in such a way where block physics appears. So this is the scheme I'm gonna use. Here I use one frequency, K1, omega one, but I could have used two frequencies, three frequencies and many more. I simply need to replace this part to a vector form, omega vector and d k vector. Such a system will simulate one plus d dimensional system. D is number of incommensurate frequencies. Starting from one dimensional system, which is shifting to the right or shifting to the left by adding time dependence in such a form. Here, the resulting dynamics is governed by two dimensional broker system. What is nice about this? We can go, we can realize not so physical system in physical system. Physical system in 1D, but we can generate one synthetic dimension along which long range hopping, which is not physical, can be realized. This is one example, 2D block matter. UT, that's the more or less the same form from the, what I showed in the last page. I showed each vectors that's uh, there are four elements. Here, the sigma is also four vector. That's identity and power matrices, one, two, three. So R vector is four element. R zero is okay. They're physical. <laughs> okay, when, I, when you look omega two T, please read it as a K two. We have one physical momentum in X direction, and there's one synthetic dimension. That's your K2. This is K2, K2, no problem. K2, K2, okay, that's good. However, here, this is our vector comes with absolute value of sine K2. You can write down your Hamiltonian, blue Hamiltonian, in terms of absolute value of sine K2. However, we say it not physical because in real space, if you do Fourier transformation K2 into Y, then along Y direction, the hoping you get is long ranged. You get infinite number of hopings because of this non-analytic function in K. However, in synthetic dimension, this is not a problem. We can realize it. 
by time dependence. Here, this is operator. And I can draw effective Hamiltonian's energy spectrum in K1 and K2. That is this. That is single copy of Gamnis Dirac fermion. The system has time reverse symmetry. And system is spinful with spinal or recoupling. This is pictorial description of what's going on. This is X, that's real space of your system. But effectively, the wave function is playing in the two-dimensional space. Along physical space, there's nearest neighbor hopping only. That's physical. We can implement it. However, along synthetic dimension, there are long range hoppings because of this non analytic part. Non analytic part, I needed to realize single copy of the Gamnis Dirac fermion. This is to avoid fermion doublings. So this is our model, and this is our numerical result. If I, this model is actually the topological Floch matter, it has outstanding transport properties. It is not simply diffusive metallic, it's better than that. It transports better conduction. Classically, if you have diffusive transport only, then when you start from the localized wave function, then it, it spread diffusively. If you compute expectation value of displacement square, then it is proportional to time. It's spread out with linearly in time. In quantum systems, you have more scenarios. In the absence of disorder, if the system is completely clean, it has ballistic transport. Here, R square average is increasing with this care. That's ballistic. If the system is topological metal, it has scaling P log T. That is very slightly better than P, but it is still better. And numerically, we can verify that. If the system is Anderson localized, if the system is insulator, then after some time, this R square saturate, there's no spreading anymore. So I show three situation at the uh, in this plot. The left, this is topological metal situation. Please look at the y axis that is scaled. This is delta r square over t. So this t is to the left hand side. And this is log scale. So what you see is uh, what you're seeing is on the left hand side log x square over t. According to the scaling of topological matter in 2D, this part is log t log t over t. That is log log t. However, our x-axis is log t. So this is log x, x prime. And please look at the plots. <laughs> that look like log t, uh, log x. 
So this is the confirmation, numeric, numerical confirmation that the model we realize is blocked topological matter. On the other hand, these two others, this is different system. This is still topological, but without time reversal symmetry. And importantly, this model has same energy spectrum. If you plot the energy spectrum in momentum space, it has exactly the same shape, but it doesn't have time reversal symmetry. And it shows completely different scaling compare this and this. So this is time reversal symmetric and this is not. And this is simply just diffusive metallic. The third situation is the Anderson localized case. Just it decreases because of this Delta X is already saturated, but T is still increasing. So yeah, this is our main result. Okay, we have a numerical part and analytic part. And I assume that I don't want to bore with the analytic part of the paper. So let me conclude. I talked today about Floquet and disorder induced metal to trans metal to insulate transition. And my research is, is about combination between Floquet, topological, and disorder. I only talked good things about our study, but there are assumes, assumptions. The one of the assumptions I don't like is we assumed the maximum strength of disorder so that we don't have a distinction of the energy. That is nice for us to do studies, but I don't want that. I want to also see weak to intermediate strengths of disorder and anything different will appear. And I didn't talk, but we also do some fox space localization, which is related to the model with interaction. And with Professor Rosa here, we do thermodynamic uncertainty relation in open and direct systems. Thank you very much for your attention. So now it's time for, for questions. Uh, maybe we have to see if there are some questions on Zoom, but there are no. So, yes, you next. A question or comment about um, your classification in dimensions and how this relates to the use of quasi dimensions. I, I refer to the fact quasi 1D system or quasi 2D system, um, quasi 1D when, when you have like a quantum wire but with a transverse dimension. Is this equivalent to 1D in your, in your uh, classification? Okay, that's, um, <clears throat> so when you say quasi-dimension, it is 1D wire with many channels. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for us, that's a 1D. But that's exactly the same as 1D. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when we say 1D or 2D, uh, like this object, the quasi, um, we always talk about compare the size of the weed and the size of the Fermi wavelengths. Yeah? And the, if the size of the weed is larger than Fermi wavelength, then this is behaving effectively as 2D. And uh, I assume what you talked is, this is not the case. This, uh, the size of the system is still small compared to wavelengths of the Fermi level but there are many channels. Uh, if this is a quasi 1D you mentioned, then to me, this is 1D. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so what, what would be the experimental realization of the, the model that you showed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that part I didn't include, but I prepared. 
I will. So this is one realization, but this is not the only one. This is showing optical network. Uh, they can do quantum works in the 1D setup, and they can do time dependence by making this rotation time dependent. Here, they use classical light. Light has two polarization. That's like spin up and down. And they can rotate the direction of spin of the light using polarizer. And they have a time dependent polarizer. And shifting operator is implemented here and here. Say horizontal and vertical, they go through different lengths of the wire. It gives you time delay between horizontal and vertical light. That's effectively give you shifting operator between horizontal and vertical. Uh, so, uh, I guess, yeah, the actual, actual setup look more like this. So, but yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And in the noise, uh, I think you should have strong noise, right? In the how can you how do you implement the noise then? Uh, okay, we don't have a noise. Uh, what do you mean by noise? No time dependent uh, disorder. Sorry, the the, the what is it? The disorder. <laughs> I mean the disorder. Oh, how do we implement the noise? Okay, that's um, also. Uh, okay, sorry, I didn't include that here, but. There's a one more unit uh, that give you uh, space dependent phase on the light. So in this setup, sorry, I didn't really explain better, but time is your space. You shoot the pulse and this pulse is circling around the loop. And there are time delays between two polarization, meaning that as this is circling, there's a spreading of the pulse for horizontal and vertical. Therefore, this time difference between two polarization give you a lattice spacing. And we can include one more unit right here as a time dependent phase applied to this light then this is becoming your the phase, random phase. I see, thank you. Uh, so, no, no more questions? No. Well, I, I have just one. Mm -hmm. Uh, if this uh, assumption about the disorder mix all the sí, anda por aquí, pero ahora justo debe de estar en una reunión con Claudio o algo así. If you don't uh, consider this assumption, uh, then something can change in your description. So mm. which assumption? If if you don't um, if you don't as, uh, assume that the disorder just mix all the energies, mm -hmm. then you will have same uh, conclusions. Mm -hmm. Here, I see, I see. what do you think that is going to change? I see, I see, yeah, thank you. Uh, that's I'm also very curious about. Well, let me show you. So this is without disorder. This is clean system. That's why we have a momentum representation. Mm -hmm. And say disorder strength is maximal, two pi over t, then two pi over t is this. It mix everywhere. But let's say your disorder is small, like as small as this, then here states only mix within the band. Here state, they mix within the band. 
and they don't they do not talk each other mm -hmm. so in this case what i expect is system still remain topological and they're going to be a critical state just like static system which is from insulator to metal to insulation like a quantum hole without a chiral mode and after transition we have a one chiral mode and there is a another transition without any chiral mode such a picture is only available in the presence of weak disorder because strong disorder will mix everything and in the presence of strong disorder there's only two phases actually yeah one is critical metallic phase and the other is topological insulating phase however for the weak disorder case phase diagram will be richer such a situation like critical metallic chiral mode critical metallic this is not available in the presence of strong disorder so yeah but yeah numerically this is can be done but analytically it is very challenging thank you, thank you. Um, so if there are no more questions then yes if you consider the zero plus one d situation then uh, is it straightforward can it be straightforwardly generalized for example can there be a uh, chiral edge mode instead of 2d sur surface uh states <laughs> uh sorry do, do we so it's, if the space dimension mm -hmm. is zero dimension oh okay 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 <laughs> well, yes everything is possible <laughs> whatever you, you imagine we can do it in the synthetic dimension there is no physical restriction. Zero plus D, zero plus three, zero plus four. Many dimensions you can simply add by adding frequencies. But there may not be open boundary in the synthetic dimension. Having open boundary is you can is is, is straightforward in the physical system. There's a system, there's no system, this is open boundary then but since that dimension okay there's it is not yeah it's not trivial to have a it is a, it is infinitely expanded dimension with random phase so the presence of topological boundary mode in the system is not guaranteed however topological response is expected it is two different things it may not have topological boundary mode however it may have topological response because of the topological work thank you thank you so i think that uh, we can stop here and thanks again yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.